All right, welcome to another uh, Sailing Doodles podcast. This, my guest today is Amanda. Uh, this one's all about Amanda. So it's, uh, we, what we did for this one is we uh, asked all our patrons and channel members, we put a post out, ask Amanda anything. So she's gonna, we haven't even looked, we looked at a couple of the questions, like the first day to see how many there were. Yeah, the first day. But there's but 30 no something questions that. that we don't know. We're just gonna go through. If you don't wanna answer them, you don't have to. Okay, okay. But, yeah, so cheers guys. And so if you would like your questions answered on the next one, you can become a patron, patreon.com slash sailing doodles, or become a channel member on YouTube, on the U sailing YouTube uh, doodles YouTube page. All right, I gotta bring up, I should have done this earlier, but I gotta bring yeah, up the fine, uh, post. fine, fine. Um, While you're bringing that up, I'm going to just say we didn't get like any sleep last night. Yeah. I don't think I'm gonna have to add that disclaimer, but like I figured I might as well. I. You know, I'd rather be answering these questions when I'm like refreshed and yeah. feeling alive. But you know, yeah, power it, through it, it was really rough last night, and in, uh, in the Anchorage, it got really choppy in the middle of the night, and so we had to wait till till dawn to move it. And then you got a nap today. I didn't really nap though, so I got a couple hours of sleep this morning once we moved. So we are right now at Norman's Key. If you're look, if you're watching this on the uh, visual podcast and on YouTube, then you can see this nice little, uh, you know turquoise clear water behind us it is beautiful here all right so i don't think i can actually check so i'm doing these from my phone normally i have my laptop up so i can i can see the names but normally i can see how long they've been a patron but i don't think i can do that now so anyway at least we can see the names so jason asked so were were you a fan of the show before you were on it how different has it been than your expect expectations do you like the lab la vagabond or do you like the vagabond lifestyle and do you want to get the band back to land and acting Oh wow, that's a lot. That's okay, a lot. so I can say I've known Bobby since before he started doing this. Yeah. So was I a fan of Bobby? <laughs> I sure. <laughs> um, but yeah, I I. Oh yeah. shoot! All right. I hope the audio is oh. better. That's all right. Okay. Yeah, that's all right. Uh, go ahead. Okay. I think you've so, been close enough to mine. It's been all right. Okay. Perfect. So. Uh, yeah, I was really interested in coming and doing Sailing Doodles in 2017 when I uh, first had the opportunity to do it. I thought it seemed really cool, but I wouldn't say I was a fan because I didn't really watch it. I just thought it was a really cool thing he was doing. How has it been different from your expectations? Oh, yeah. Um, well, I didn't expect us to to oh. bond like we have. I didn't expect for us to like end up in a relationship at any point. I really didn't. I thought we were going to be platonic friends forever. Uh, well, cheers <laughs> to uh, things changing. So that's good. I mean, I hope that's okay to say. Oh yeah, for sure. Thank okay. you. I'm happy. I'm happy things have turned out the way they have. Um, do you like the La, La Vagabond lifestyle? Or I keep saying La Vagabond. The, do, the do you Vag like the Vagabond <laughs> lifestyle or do you want to go back to land and acting? I really do. This is more my speed. It's just, I feel like there's just so many places to explore. There's a whole world out there. And for me to be stuck in one landlocked place, just, it sounds really, I don't know, really confining. But I do like the idea of splitting my time. You know, if we could do a few months even yeah. on land and then. Well, I think that's kind of the general plan. Yeah. I mean, do, you know, I mean, for me personally, I'd, I'd prefer to do like, Maybe three months on a boat, one month in the RV, kind of that rotation. I would love that. But overall, vagabond life is great. And then mixing that in with some settled uh, stuff would be awesome. All right, Diane says, no questions here uh, in particular. Age doesn't matter. Health and love is all that matters. Thank oh, you. thank right. you. She did follow it up with travel is a wonderful opportunity. Take, all, take it all in while you can. I would love to travel full time. Uh, George and I met Bobby and crew on the BVI flotilla in January 23. We were in, they were on Carrie Lee. All right. Well, good. To, thanks for being a patron too. Yeah. Uh, Curtis asks, uh, what made you decide to jump Bobby's bones? Uh, oh, what, what makes Bobby a keeper in your eyes? Oh, shoot. Oh, oh. oh my gosh. Okay. Pressure's on. <laughs> All right. So... Um, Bobby's very good to me. Bobby has, no one's ever made me feel as special as Bobby makes oh, wow. me feel. So, um, I, I think that's, that's the okay. biggest thing for me. Well, cool. Thank but you. You are very special. Thank you. 
All right, uh, James asks, as an actor, what genre do you like uh, the most? I do drama, Shakespeare, and thrillers in local theater, but I always love to hear another, another perspective. What genre of acting? Mm -hmm. Is that what it? Like, you know, do you like, do you like comedies? Do you like uh, action? Do you like, uh, you know, drama? Yeah, I would say, drama is what I was first drawn to. Um, just playing roles that are so far from who I actually am, I find that to be really fun. Or like a really animated kind of character. I like crying and screaming on camera. Like that kind of thing is really fun. Um, so I'd say drama, but it can get a little depressing and painful if you're like trying to go into like a, uh, that head, head right, yeah. that kind of headspace on a regular basis. All right, Stick1270 says, Amanda, how has Instagram changed since you first started posting? Is the monetization there better than YouTube according to views? How does it compare to TikTok? There is no monetization yeah. on Instagram, so I think I would have to have like sponsorships, yeah. some sort of paid partnership. There's very little money in any of the short form stuff in Instagram or t even TikTok. Most of those people on TikTok, are, they're not making their income from TikTok. They're right. making their income from sponsorships. Because, it's more for brand awareness, I think. Just yeah. to like get your name out there and be, have a, yeah. So like, I mean, it, with YouTube Shorts, which is the same thing as Instagram Reels or TikTok, uh, like I think I have a video that's got 25 million views and it's earned like fifteen hundred dollars, and so like, you know, you need you need to be in the millions of views before you're earning any kind of money on that, and it's just not reasonable for most people. So like, don't think that if so, they're, people on TikTok and all that, I'm sure they're making money of it somehow, but they're not making a lot from TikTok or from Instagram. Well, once you have enough eyeballs on your page, I think people are interested in those paid partnerships. But. Um, it's changed a lot, actually. I think that back when I was doing it before, feed posts were really a big deal. That was important to post on your feed every day. Now it's more stories and reels. And TikTok, I'm I'm on there, but I haven't seen a ton of growth. It's really not doing a whole lot. Uh, all right, Dawn asks, Hi Amanda, I went to your website to get your P.O. box. Uh, so she, he gets send you some stuff, I guess. I uh, couldn't find it posted. Oh. Um, how tall, by the way, also how tall are you and what is the age difference between you and Bobby? So I'm five, I think I'm five, three and a half, five, four, something like that. Uh, the P.O. box is on there. It's at the bottom of the page on the contact me section, I think. Okay. Bobby is 16 years older than me. Yep. So I'm 30 and he's 46. 46, yep. All right, William asks, Hi Amanda, what is your biggest surprise when it comes to the sailing and cruising lifestyle? Um, it is likely one of those things you can't know what it is until you do it. Thanks in advance. Biggest surprise? I almost feel like I'm a completely different person. It feels like I'm living a completely different life than I was living on land. And I don't know why that is, but it really feels completely separate. And I feel like I'm less productive wow. and it's hard to... Well, everything's harder on a boat. I mean, it's, you know, it's you twice as hard. Yeah, yeah. I mean, everything, and, and then you, do, you, you waste so much time just maintaining and cleaning and all that, the boat, that all your other stuff that, you know, kind of goes to the wayside. So it's harder to edit and to find time and to do all that stuff. Yeah. I, I'm surprised by that, though. The, Full dichotomy and s almost feeling like it, I have a second life over here. All right, Ken Wade Lee says, "Hi Amanda, do you see yourself staying on as first mate?" Oh yeah, I'm. I have no plans to leave. Yeah. So well, glad to have you. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, Keith, who is a patron that joined us in the last flotilla, he won the drawing. Keith, uh, I love Keith. And it says Amanda, no question here. Just wanted to tell everyone what a down to earth person you are. Unfortunately. There, there are those that have been in the acting and produ producing arts can be off-putting, especially when they bring you to bring to the table the personal aesthetics that you do. Um, you were so kind to me on the flotilla, and I just would like to let everyone know out there that Amanda is generally good people. 
Uh, same goes for Bobby. May all your dreams and wishes come oh, true. Oh, thank you, Keith. Likewise. We thought you were so fun yeah, nice and guy. really great to have on board. So I appreciate that. Thank you. All right, Glenn Goodall. Amanda, hope this uh, question isn't too personal, but what attracted you to Bobby? Uh, to basically give up shore life and live with him on a boat sailing the world. If it's too personal, I'll understand not to answer. But Bobby seems to be very happy around you. And who could blame him? You're a breath of fresh air, not to mention hot. Oops, I mentioned I mentioned it. Uh, sorry, wolf, wolf, <laughs> Glenn and Jackie. Oh, well, thank you. And I think we are kind of covered that. Just that Bobby's very good to me. It makes me feel very special. I, I don't know if I should elaborate but that's the gist of it the all right robert doe amanda what does your future look like i don't know i have no idea what my future looks like i know for now i'll yeah. continue we know what's going on in the next like six months maybe and right it's not really so who knows i'll be sailing yeah and i'll be We'll go to the RV in the spring. Somebody's taking off in their Falcon private jet, so it'll be a little loud here <laughs> at Norman's Key. Um, uh, so Schmoops, that's Jen and Erica. Jen I'm still Erica. thinking oh. about my future, though. Oh. I don't know. I, do I need to add to that? Or Sorry about the airplane noise. Uh, immediate future. Go ahead. I guess I really can't take it beyond that. Yeah, I don't know. I'm just a little free spirit over here, I guess. <laughs> All right, Schmoops Adventures, uh, that's their YouTube channel. Um, they are Jen and Eric. Uh, as a young person, what is your financial goal and expectations in life? Are you building passive income or saving for retirement in traditional ways like IRA or 401k? Mm -hmm. This may not exactly be relevant, and I hope it's not too personal, but I'm surprised at the answers to this question, especially in the digital creator environment. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I invest in the S&P 500, I will tell you that, like, have a Roth IRA, since I'm a work for myself, it's not like I have a additional benefits, really, so the Roth IRA makes the most sense, but I want to, I want to generate, like, more passive income, but, what, can I actually see this question? I, what, I mean... What? No, it's right. I, it's just what? What is your financial goals and expectations? Financial goals and expectations. I. There's no. Number I'm, I'm I can share, but like I just want to be comfortable, and I want to live a. I want to be comfortable all the way through my retirement, and I, I don't want to. I want to retire, somewhat early, <laughs> if I can. I hope that's not too vague, but. Uh, I'm a saver and I'm pretty conservative and frugal when it comes to all of that. So I'm very careful and I'm hoping that my YouTube grows and is able to generate more to help me achieve those goals. Is that very cryptic? No, it's great. Okay. I mean, it's a hard question to answer. Uh, Barry asks, how long have you been a pilot? I don't know if that's directed to me. Well, some people think I'm a pilot oh. because I've done a few flying lessons. Okay. Which, so I'm not a pilot, but I have taken three lessons and it's really fun. Yeah. I uh, got my private pilot's license in 99. So uh, 25 years now. Well, uh, let's see here. Although I haven't really flown and I am flown personal, like, well, I have flown at, meh. I haven't flown professionally in seven years now. Um, Will Miller, hi Amanda, I'm loving you on Sailing Doodles. Please don't leave. Hope you are able to stay on the boat with Bobby. Do you miss acting um, or are you happy being chilled on the boat? Oh. Thanks for making Sailing Doodles even better. You're the icing on the cake. Thank you. Oh, thank you. I really like what I'm doing right now, so I wouldn't change it. I'm totally happy and I, I might like pick up a gig here and there. If it, yeah, you were talking if it about it. Yeah, if something, if something works out. Mm -hmm. Uh, all right, the Mad Greek. Amanda, where do you call home? Uh, mom, dad, brothers, sisters? Oh, yeah. So I'm from Dallas, but I no longer have a home. Yeah, homeless? <laughs> I, yeah, I live on the boat. My stuff is in storage, and I have family all over, but Texas is primarily where my family is. Uh, just kind of like a little bit 
It's a different question, but Brian asked, so what attracted you to Bobby? You kind of already answered that one. Have you guys dated before? No, we never did. Uh, never did. Nope. I won't elaborate. <laughs> uh, They're gonna think that means something other than what it means. What does it mean? But Bobby and I were ju literally just friends for like seven years I until a couple months ago. I always wanted her. She didn't. He know. did, Th but that's what I was not going to say. Oh. But uh, I forgot. I forgot the question. That's you know. Have you guys dated before? As okay, so I was gonna say no, but he would have liked to. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> Walker, uh, how do you both stay in such wonderful shape, either living on a boat or being on the move all the time? Well, Bobby runs, and he'll actually run quite a bit and then do push-ups and then run some more. She does a lot of cocaine, so. <laughs> That's no, not I'm true. Kidding, kidding, kidding. Uh, no. no, she eats like a bird. So, <laughs> so it's more of my diet, yeah. I guess. I did work out, though, back. Before I got on the boat, I think everything I have is more residual. I'll work out occasionally here, but it's hard mm -hmm. on the boat. And it's especially this small boat. Like on my last boat, I had like, you know, weights and stuff like that and mats you could do and all that. People, you know, the girls worked out on the boat. I worked out on the boat. I had a, I had a you know, stationary bike and, and, and all that. Uh, this, this size boat, I mean, it's just, we don't have room for all that stuff. So I think once we get the bigger boat, we'll have more room for stuff like that. And I'll definitely be working out then because yeah. I, I like. I like weightlifting. That's more of what I want to do, but that's really tricky here. All right, Greg Romero. Thanks, sir. He's one of our top patrons, by the way. You have met him in Dallas. Um, oh, yes. We did uh, talk about this. Yep. Uh, what's on the bucket list? Where are the places you want to go see before you leave the sailing lifestyle? So I, I guess he means sailing bucket list. Yeah, but. I want to do the med. I yeah. haven't done that. And I think there are a lot of countries I haven't even been to over there. It would be amazing. I always say Costa Rica is one of my favorite places I've never been because it's so biodiverse and seems amazing. Um, uh, French Polynesia. Yeah. Well, hopefully we'll get to do all that stuff. Any, yeah. any other places you want to add? No. Why do you say it like that, though? Well, no. Hopefully, I mean, hopefully we'll get to do that. Well, who knows when we're getting the boat or where it's going to be and all that. Oh, so. that's true. I don't know. That's true. I know. Like, I mean, I don't yeah. know where we're going to get the boat. I mean, that's kind of a thing. Like with all this stuff going on in the Middle East, like shipping. Yeah. You now is going to be like, can we even get the boat shipped to the U.S. now, or are we have to go pick it up in Thailand, and then all the crap that goes with that? So I don't know. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. All right, Robert Savage, I know that you have an acting background, but how is it living with a camera going almost all the time? Hmm. It is a little different because it's all just, I don't want to say it's improv because it's not, it's just like real life. Um, we don't script anything. No, no. People have now, how long, is it? I'm like, no, we don't script anything. No, no, it's just documenting our lives com yeah. completely. So it's, it's just different. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how to answer that. I feel like sometimes I'm not quick enough. I'm like, I feel like I take my time to respond to people in person. And so if I do that, when we're running around living our lives with camera on, sometimes I, I miss the opportunity to chime in. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's, I've noticed that. Like, I think we're filming and then like, if something happens a few seconds go by, I'm like, okay, well, I'm filming this thing over here. And then you start talking about what was happening. Like, well. Yeah. So. I guess I just need to be quicker. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right, so those are all patrons. We'll go back to that list, but uh, there's a few uh, channel member questions. So okay. it's not channel member on the Doodles podcast, channel member on Sailing Doodles. Uh, Rick Yu, uh, 52, says, how do you stay so beautiful? You're in incredible shape and always seem to be happy and positive. That's great. Oh, thank you. Well, I before coming on the boat, I actually was for my health, I was on quite a diet, so I and I worked out. So I think that this is all residual from that. I used to meditate and write and just try to be really mentally and physically well. I would take green. I would drink green juice in the mornings, and I was gluten free, dairy free, all that kind of stuff, which I don't recommend for everyone. I had long COVID, and it's a long story, but it just ended up being the diet I, I was on. And I think that 
it was just like really restrictive and <laughs> um and what now so <laughs> oh and now i'm <laughs> not on any sort of yeah. diet i think my microbiome is adjusted to just a completely different way of eating and um we'll see what happens hopefully i stay yeah, in good shape i'm sure you it's will probably genetics right yeah well until you're third 30 that's the problem then it all goes down i'm 30 now i know exactly uh all right so buddy this he already had, this is kind of a what are your long-term goals and how are you preparing for those goals we kind of touched on that stuff i think already my I say, how shift. Are you preparing? well that was financial okay. but like my goals shift i i wanted a family really bad for a while and then it's like I don't I don't know what's going to happen the world you know things are not to get too deep but I just so many things are unpredictable and I just now I'm conflicted on whether or not I, I want to have kids but for the longest time I wanted to to do that that was a big goal and then just I want to take care of my family uh, financially and I mean that's my biggest goal Okay. My biggest goal is to just keep taking care of my family. All right, uh, this is a good one. Parity Charles in from Brazil. Amanda, is Bobby as nice when you're with him 24/7 as he is in the videos? What is our his uh, bad points that we don't see? Don't hold back. <laughs> Bobby is Bobby's really good to me. I don't know. I can't speak for anybody. Sorry else. for what I said when I'm docking the boat. Yeah, Bobby's really good to me, but that's probably your biggest flaw is you occasionally will get a little impatient <laughs> it's true yeah, when, yeah. Uh, I, I agree I, I, I admit that i get a little but impatient he's really nice he is really nice and you're not i i don't remember exactly how that question was phrased right. but so well here's a follow-up there from him back he's, back to the patreon really nice. list he's very good to me. uh what is the most frustrating part of boat life <laughs> Bobby, no. Yeah. Uh, most frustrating part. I do think if the more I learn, the more useful I will feel. And it is frustrating sometimes watching him do a bunch of stuff that I actually can't help with. Yeah. I don't know if that's the most fr frustrating thing. I actually have felt like I've been losing tr touch with some of my friends. That might be a thing. Yeah. I should, I need to make it a point to stay in touch with everyone, but. It is hard to do actually. Yeah. Cause I mean, you don't, uh, you know, you're gone. I mean, it's, you know, you don't see each other but a couple times a year, you know, so. Yeah. Uh, okay, another one from Daryl. Have there been any difficult adjustments accommodating to life being a wanderer? Oh yeah. I uprooted my whole life to come here and do this. So I got rid of my place and I was a caregiver. So I hired a bunch of help um, for my mom and I quit my job. I, oh, I was in a relationship for, I, I bet I, we ended that quite a while before I came on the boat but uh, ended that really to come do this. So that's a lot. Yeah, that is a lot. It's a lot of changes. Uh, all right, Jorge, uh, is Bobby that grumpy? What's up with all this stuff? Grumpy. Uh, ha ha, just kidding. Why are you so afraid of your sailing skills? Especially if you are going to learn from a great teacher. Afraid of my sailing skills. I've been learning a lot lately actually I've, i do feel more helpful you just learned how to drive the dinghy today yeah i did i learned how to drive the dinghy today i've been helpful i think when we dock and yeah anchor all of that yeah. but i it just I takes practice it takes doing it before you really get it i don't want bobby to see me fail <laughs> so <laughs> i'd rather I fail learn all the time. from someone okay. else <laughs> i fail all yeah, the time but i don't know i don't want you to I don't. <laughs> All, right. All right, Frank asks, uh, I've been a fan since the beginning. I know from living on a boat that it's a lot of upkeep. Amanda, are you learning the ins and outs of technology and navigating? I found this to be incredibly important for my wife uh, because if the unthinkable happens and I become incapacitated. I would like to. I No, I haven't been learning much about that. Well, I mean, like, 
Well, we're just island hopping in the Caribbean and the Bahamas. I mean, like you're always in cell phone service range. I mean, like yeah. if something happens, call nine one one or whatever. You know. Yeah. Uh, plus, some our buddy. The radio. Or the radio. Yeah, you see on radio channel sixteen. Um, but like, I mean, we're buddy boating with another boat right now, so they'll always they're always kind of around. So. But I could navigate somewhere, sure. I guess. Like yeah, yeah, I do know how to. You were steering the boat and all that, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Well, and I know how. I guess I kind of know how to use the chart. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I, well, once we start doing actual, like, ocean passages and stuff, like, you know, later this year. Sorry. Later this year. Uh, yeah, we definitely need to learn all that stuff then. Yeah. I want to take an actual sailing course, too. Yeah. All right. Mike asks, uh, as you learn how to sail slash first mate, in your opinion, what is the hardest thing you have had to learn how to do? Hmm. Knots. No, knots no, not really knots. aren't that, not knots. They weren't that hard. Knots are not that hard. I mean, during, my sailing lesson came with challenges. Like understanding. What? Hmm. Keep going. I don't, I don't know. I, we tacking and that sort of thing. I think I, I'd have to practice that. That stuff, like the actual, uh, in my opinion, the actual doing the procedures and all that stuff is not, uh, that's okay. Sure. You learn that it takes time, whatever, but it's like, you need to know when to do all the right stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's the main thing is like, and you don't get that from a class. You actually have to actually be out there doing it to yeah, know when not. you got to do something. Yeah, I'm not there yet. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That that's tricky. All right. Uh, let's see, that was done already. So, Bick asks Amanda, I love having you on the show. Question for both of you, really. Uh, how hard is it these days negotiating the logistics of travel around the world? Question number two: How hard is it to adjust to different amenities from each boat? From a women's perspective, what are the what are the from a woman's perspective, what are the things you value most? I'm assuming boat oh, related. Or something. Yeah, I'm gonna start there. <laughs> okay. Uh, one thing that is a little difficult on this boat is needing to ration water. There's no fresh yeah. water maker or whatever you call water it. Water maker, yeah. Um, and so. You know, quick showers. I can do that. It's not a problem. I I'm I know to do that. Uh, I think this but, boat only carries like 60 gallons of fresh water. Yeah, we're really conserving. We're really uh, rationing. And so it. like, although like 60 gallons. I mean, like if you're conserving it, not wasting it, and you do dishes the right way and you shower the right way, it should last a week. And that's in my experience for two people. Like we were doing 60 gallons when we were crossing the uh, Pacific because we had three 60 gallon tanks. And it was three of us, and we were making it a week. So, oh, that's yeah. good. I. That's just one thing I've noticed here. Oh, man, um, as a woman, so though, as far as like more. so logistics of traveling around the world, uh, like the actual you. travel part's not hard. It's mostly just lugging lugging around all the gear. I mean, like when we went to Thailand, we each checked two bags and a carry on and a personal item, right? And then. Yes. You know, the other day when we were coming out to Florida, we each had like three bags checked because like, you know, we were bringing a bunch of crap out. And that's the main thing is just lugging around all the gears. So when we're traveling, we got to bring a Starlink so that we have internet. So that's one bag. Like my check, my, per, my carry on bag is all camera gear and batteries and drones and all that stuff. Laptops, all that stuff it's really heavy. And then I have another checked bag that is probably half closed and then the rest gear. So, I mean, that's the main thing, is just traveling with all that crap. That's the thing that, yeah. And I have one more go ahead. for the yeah. his other part of the question. Mm -hmm. um, lighting to do, like, oh, hair really? and makeup and just space yeah. to do my hair and makeup would be nice. Yeah, there's not very good lighting and stuff for makeup on this boat. Yeah, so from a women, woman's perspective, if that's what you you mean, mm -hmm. I... My, on my new boat, the cat, it'll have, it has like a little uh, vanity, like in the vanity, like desk type thing. That's great. In the, in the, in the, in the, um, in the, in the bedroom, in the cabin. That's awesome. So, yeah, yeah that'll be nice. 
Uh, and then what was that? Uh, there was one other thing. How hard is it to adjust the amenities from each boat? Uh, you know, we expect we're not. Yeah, charter boats are kind of all the same. I mean, you gotta. All the systems are generally the same. That's it's basically just learning how the systems work mostly, and then but you know, for amenities, I don't know, like hair dryers and stuff. We're also really like agile people, like flexible. I yeah. feel like we can adapt easily to whatever, but. No, there. I mean, there aren't hair dryers. No, I haven't encountered. I know. I've never seen you blow dry your hair. I think once. We were, what were we doing? We were oh, going yeah. somewhere. Oh yeah, I did blow dry my hair once. We were in a hotel though. Mm -hmm. I, think, I don't remember where we are. That was fun. Uh, <laughs> the little things. All right, uh, Daynard, um, how do you stay in shape? Your six pack abs and beautiful tone all over. <laughs> do you have exceptional genes or metabolism? We've kind of talked about this. I I do think part of it is genetic. But I did gymnastics for a long time and played sports. I played softball for years. I was just really active growing up. So I think that gave me a really good foundation. Um, and because I don't maintain it like you would expect, but I go through phases where I work out. I do weight, I'll do weightlifting for months and then I'll fall off and then I'll run for a couple months and then fall off. So it's hard to. Mm -hmm keep that routine but well she also eats really well oh, mostly yeah that's true i was eating really well oh no i wasn't drinking any alcohol no sugar i i think sugar and i don't drink soda um i think that's actually huge is not drinking soda or consuming much sugar limiting sugar um all right i think sugar yeah, is very important um limiting it uh, Rupert, um, what are your concerns over the use of AI in both filmmaking and YouTube videos as it pertains to someone like yourself who is attempting to break into the industry? Oh, yeah. I mean, everything's going to change yeah. in just a few years. So that's really scary. I feel like there's going to be a lot to keep up with, if you can even keep up. Like, um, I don't well, know. There's just going to be so much to learn. Well, so, uh, so far from the standpoint of AI actually generating like a blog type video, we're still pretty pretty long off from that. I mean, like- But like five years. Five to 10, honestly. I mean, like they'll be able to do it in five years, but the computing power it'll take is gonna be out of, to, out of reach for most people. It'll be 10 years really before, you know, just, you can just, gen like it, it could pretend that we're here doing like, you know what I mean? Like it could sh just make everything up that it's sailing around. I think that's a ways off. But the so thing- So scary. <laughs> the thing that, that and thankfully the sailing genre is not as affected by this as more like science and information and technology videos so what a lot of it's man it's really it's running rampant and it's all over youtube and youtube's not really doing much about it unfortunately uh they have some copyright stuff but what you what people what people are doing is they're using ai to like repackage a video that somebody made like I, there was a guy one of the guys i follow is oh man i forgot his channel name but he's a science guy and he did a whole video about how a lot of his videos have been stolen and then they have an ai generating voice that does voiceover over a lot like you know it just chops up the video so that it doesn't get as copyright seen and then so then they'll make a hundred different versions of that and put it out and then one of them will get a couple million views and you know and so it's just we're getting flooded with ai generated content for that kind of stuff and you know it's just re re, re repackaging Repackage. other people's work and using ai to do it and, and to copy and that's going to be a real problem um and also one thing i don't like about youtube is all the short stuff youtube is pushing the shorts so hard that you have to do them or you're going to get left behind but the problem is there's no money in shorts. Like, yeah, we've had some shorts get 25 million views and we've got a lot of new subscribers from it, but that doesn't, tra those subscribers don't translate to long form content views. And then that's how we make our money is the long form content. I don't, I hardly make anything on shorts and it's real frustrating that, that uh, you know, YouTube is pushing this and it's because they want to capture the younger audience. And, but, but the problem is, I mean, like with sailing, the audience is all older. 45 and older is like 75% of our stuff and so just kind of it messes everything up and I don't know what's going to happen with it so I'm really frustrated with it 
I don't know what's gonna happen with it either, which is part of what's so scary, the unknown. But yeah. it sounds sounds like things may get a little crazy. And in filmmaking though, I mean like that's gonna be that's gonna be in the next five years where there's gonna be a totally AI generated video movie that you can't tell the difference. That will be out in within five years. I've been asked multiple times if they could scan my face to um, put it in the background of films. And I've turned it down every time. I've never ended up doing it, but that's something they're doing a lot right now. They'll like scan people's face and use so them as don't have to pay recurring for background actors, yeah. Do you, would you still get some kind of money from that if they put your face in there? I don't know, I just don't didn't want to do it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if there's any sort, I don't think so. I think. What I've seen is just like a flat rate. Things may have changed since the strike. I don't know. Yeah. 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 All right, Greg Romero again. Thanks, Greg. Uh, actually asking a question for both of you. Do you ever get to a point where you need a break from sailing? Uh, do you occasionally need time back on land sometimes or a place to reset? Well, what Bobby always says is after three months, he needs to get off the boat. And after six months, he needs to get the F off the boat. Yeah. So, which sounds about right. I. I mean, we we did take a break for Christmas, but. Uh, I mean, shoot, I'm almost ready for a break again. You know. Yeah, I um, I think more frequent you know, than that would. Yeah, but I mean, to, be ideal. But today's been kind of a because we didn't sleep last night, and so we're all just like I just like to not be in a calm place. We slept in like a dryer too like a yeah. washing machine yeah it was really rough um yeah and slept. unfortunately it's gonna be kind of crappy weather down here for the next couple of days so we're just gonna have to deal with it after that it should be fine but yeah the next couple of days are gonna suck it's just because we're in the northern end of the exumas and there's not i mean if the wind's out of the east great i mean there's a million anchorages but when the wind's out of the south the north the west and you're in the northern exumas there's not a lot of places you can be in uh, a sheltered calm bay, uh, and sure you can go on the. But the pro, like, it's the wind had been blowing out of the northeast for four days, and then it switches around, comes out of the southeast, well, or the the west or whatever. Sure, that sounds good. Okay, just go to the other side of the island chain, but you still have that swell coming in. That's gonna. Yeah, it's just. Ugh. So anyway. Yay. Yay. We need a break. <laughs> um, all right, we got two more left. Uh, Ron. Oh, I want more. Well, I gotta wait. We'll have to do another one. Okay. How long is it? 33, 37 minutes. Okay. Uh, Ron, I uh, love the waterfall pictures and pose. Uh, need a lot more of those. Will you be going back to acting at some point? I don't plan to fully go back. I mean, I was always a freelancer, so it's like I'll take a gig here, take a gig there. I would love to do something. Um, you know what? Yes. I, I would probably do both. You know, this would be my main thing. And then if I, I got, I don't know, if I landed a TV show for a month, I'd go off and do that and come back. Mm -hmm. I would love to do that, Make, do a little bit of both. But I really do like the unscripted stuff. This is making me want to do unscripted TV, which I never... Would that be like... Uh, more reality. Reality stuff, yeah. But as this is a, rea it's a reality show. It's what we're doing. Yeah. It's, ours is just very authentic. Mm -hmm. All right. Last question from Stefan. Uh, what is the high point of your sailing life so far? Any negative point? Uh, thanks for the great content. Oh. High point. May not even be this trip. Was there a high point when you were sailing with me before? I think just expanding my world is the high point. Just, I mean, you get to see so much and come out of your bubble. And I also like that I can help people see that it's possible to go against the grain. You don't have to conform or do what everybody else is doing around you. If you want to get out there and go do something different, you can. So it really makes me happy that I can, um, yeah, be a vagabond and show people that it's possible. Any low points? Low points. Other than this yeah. morning? Um, there or have been low night. points. Yeah, last night was pretty awful. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, 
I don't think I should say what what my low points have been. What have I mean? Um, <laughs> I don't know how to, how to put it. Um. <laughs> hmm. What? If, if I've been impatient or something? No, no, it has nothing to do with you, oh. really. Actually, kind of. You were kind of involved. Okay. But... What? When was oh this? Oh my gosh. <laughs> when was this? Can you cut this out? Um, <laughs> Maybe. So, if I say it, can you cut it out if you don't want it in? Sure. Okay. So, drama. Oh. Oh, yeah, there was some drama. There was a little drama. There was a little drama. That's right. Forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. I really didn't like that. Yeah. Yeah, we had... Yeah, I mean, most everybody got along. It was just kind of like there was a few days where people weren't getting along. Yeah, and no, people did get along, and we all do get along, luckily. Mm. Yeah. Now, but. Yeah. It's okay. Mm. You're, you might have to cut that out. Ah, it's all right. No problem. But, all right. Anything you want to add to let the people know about Amanda Zachary? Check out Amanda Zachary on her YouTube. She, oh, yeah. she, oh, she posted a video today. Yeah, my official relaunch was today. So check it out. Yep. Amanda Zachary, Z-A-K-R-I on YouTube. And I'll be posting weekly content. I'm having a hard time actually getting myself to capture content. But um, I'm going to work on that. And what else? You can go to amandazachary.com to find my other social media platforms and anything else I might be up to but thank you so much for for watching and asking the questions I had a really fun time answering all right well thanks for sitting down with me again <laughs> all right thank I, you the I'm pleasure about is mine I'm about ready for a nap now I, I know you are <laughs> yeah. all right guys thanks for tuning in and all we right. will see you on the next podcast